everyone. Uh, welcome and uh, welcome back to the next demo uh, with Terminal 49. Uh, my name is Ines Nastali. I'm the editor of Ports and Harbors magazine, which is the membership publication of the International Association of um, Ports and Harbors. And uh, with me here today is um, Akshay Dudeja, who's the CEO of Terminal 49, and um, he's going to go and uh, present to us now. But before we go into that, actually, let's start off with some kind of introductory questions. Um, Akshay, what is the major pain point that you try to solve for the industry? Well, thanks for having me. Um, you know, we talk to a lot of parties, whether they are BCOs, cargo owners, service providers like customs brokers, and a common pain point that, uh, that we see is they spend, a, as it pertains to import containers, import cargo, they spend a lot of try, time trying to figure out what's happening with their cargo before they can make a decision, right? Um, and so that's the pain point that we are focused on solving. And what, what could be a point point? It's like, hey, what are the delays that are happening? If you look at a, maybe an ETA from an MSC versus CMA or an Evergreen, across the dimension of carriers, across the dimensions of the ports they're coming to, across time, there are inconsistencies. So you end up having to have these mental models, which break down. They have broken down in the last year and a half. You might want to know, like, okay, even before a container gets discharged, what issues it might have, like fees, holds that might need to clear. So you can do it before, so it can become available. And then as it's at the terminal, you know, you need to then go into the terminal data to figure out, like, what's the last free day. So you're looking at many different data sources even before you can make the decision, and that's the pain point that we're focused on. Yeah, and um, I think... Ocean freight data is quite notorious for, for being inaccurate and delayed. So um, how do you solve the challenge of um, you know, collecting and making it accurate and kind of real time as well? Yeah, and so you know, I, I think there is, first of all, it's like a continuously improving problem that we focus on. So I, I don't want to say we like solved it. Um, to the previous question, and let's just talk about ETAs for, for a second. Our goal is one is like, what is accuracy? What does it even mean, right? And so one thing that we look at is consistency. So if you are getting an ETA across your shipments and you are using multiple carriers, you're importing into multiple ports, the expectation on the quality of that ETA that you might want to see two weeks before it arrives should be consistent across carriers. And so we uh, have a data platform where we are using predictive analysis. Uh, we are using data ops teams to do spot checking and improvements. Uh, we are annotating it from different sources. So hey, let's take the data from the marine exchange in Los Angeles. To, let's take the arrivals from uh, what the terminal is telling us. Let's take, take the v vessel AIS. So that's just one example of how do we improve the quality. And the second thing is latencies. Like, you want to know. Um, when something happens, like a milestone happens, you want to know as quickly as possible. Sometimes using data, different data sources helps us give that data back to you much faster. Excellent. So let's go into the nitty gritty of that and um, start your presentation. Sounds good. So yeah, at the high level, Terminal 49 is an all-in-one container tracking platform. Just a brief background, we actually started off building software for trucking companies. We kind of like started talking to trucking companies in the Oakland area. And it was an eye-opening experience just going into a converted class, converted trailer, seeing people basically move information in order to move the cargo. So that was the first insight. It's like, okay, if you efficiently move information, the outcome as your cargo flows might be more efficient. Um, Turns out building software for trucking companies wasn't a great business. So we were like, let's just start our own trucking service. So the genesis of the platform was we built the tooling for our teams, did the integrations with all the terminals and all the carriers, and provided visibility to not just our ops people, our customers, but also the trucking companies. And we've basically eliminated demerge improve the turnaround times, uh, and provided visibility to everybody. And a lot of customers are like, hey, can you give it to us in other ports? Um, and that's where a lot of the folks in the whole ecosystem as it pertains to importing cargo, they found out that tracking containers is hard work. You're doing it over shipping carriers. 
you're doing it in the terminals. Uh, if you're doing rail, you need to log into a rail carrier's website to get the pickup number, get the availability. And now, even if something is telling you the ETA is this, you're looking at marine traffic or similar sites to figure out where is the vessel. So you can make some assumptions around like, is it, okay, it's actually not gonna get there you know, in, in two weeks as it's saying. So we wanted to solve this problem, not just like, hey, let's just do container tracking or carriers, but how do we take data from different sources and build a pretty picture across the container's journey? And why is this? This is because if you're an importing team at a cargo owner or a service provider like a uh, freight forward or a customs broker, you are spending a lot of time, we see four to eight hours a week per person, just doing track and trace and data entry before even you can take any actions. And this manual process, you know, leads to more delays, higher cost of transportation, but most importantly, terrible user experience for your, your, your team and, and your end customer. And we have solved that today. Well, I want to say we're continuously solving it today because it's a hard problem, you know. And we have now built tooling, not just like, show, you know, let me track containers, but give me insights that helps me take specific actions immediately. Of course, saving time, but, you know, when you come up in the morning, it, it's less hair pulling and it's more like, okay, now I have my to-do list. And I'll talk about that in a second. So today, Terminal 49 is a single place to see all your containers. Uh, across all carriers and terminals, updated in real time. Uh, but more importantly, you know, I like to say it's like we have built a to-do list for you when you come into the morning. Hey, which are my shipments across agnostic of carriers, port, uh, origin, destination, what's coming in today? So you might nudge your customers, you might let your DRE providers know it's like, hey, do the delivery orders. Hey, we are monitoring the ETAs for you and we monitor the origin ETA and the last ETA, so we're constantly telling you if something is being delayed. How much is it delayed by? Uh, how, how early it might be coming? And you know, this is gonna be helpful in resource planning. Um, but most importantly, let, we help identify containers that are at risk. Um, what that means is we automatically surface problem containers. Because we can t connect the data from the ocean carriers and the terminals, we're able to identify containers that might be at risk of not getting picked up, risk of uh, not being available in time and not having enough last free day, risk of having demerge. So it's like, this is a priority list of containers um, with demerge on top so you can then pay for it. And what that means is even before it discharges, you can start taking actions on your containers what are those actions? Let's say a container is three days uh, or even four days uh, before arrival. You'll see it on this list and you're like, hey, it has a hold. What's the hold? Is it a freight hold? Is it a customs hold? Um, and then you can take those actions today. So today, you know, our three philosophies in where we're going is first, tell me anything about any container across the world. Second, identify containers that are at risk. So today I can take actions and expedite that cargo. And then it's like, what actions should I take? And that's where we're going. So it's a read-only experience today, but all those actions of paying fees, resolving holds, filing the right paperwork, notifying your drainage partners, that's the direction we're going is we want to help you take those actions and maybe even automate those things. So we think of it as kind of an infrastructure company for logistics supply chain. Visibility is a key component. But today is like, let's focus, let's solve the hard problem of the data problem and tomorrow we might, we might help you take those actions. So, you know, this is a simple dashboard, but under the hood, we are pulling data from various sources and simplifying the user experience for you. So how do we do it? So currently, our focus is on taking data from every major ocean carrier, and in US and Canada, we are connected to every terminal directly. So if you log into you know, LBCT here, and you're about to get availability, you want to know the last free day, you might have another team member do the same login to check next day. You, we basically eliminate that work. So our system is continuously monitoring for changes for each container across its journey, all the way from empty out at the origin to empty return. 
and provide you specific information at the terminal through a standardized interface or API, right? And our, our data philosophy is like, we're not trying to force everybody to use our dashboard. We understand that you might build your own dashboard, you might want to put in your data warehouse, you might want to do your own analysis around the data for performance or evaluating your carriers. And so we are agnostic to how you use this data because ultimately it's your data. We are fixing the plumbing and enriching the data so you can use it from an operational standpoint. And so a couple of things that we do, you know, just to highlight is improve the quality of the data, standardize it. What's an LA, what's a port of discharge, whether you get it from MSC, Evergreen, it'll always be standard. Time stamps, time zones, you know, it, the, these are small things, but like, hey, the, the approach that a carrier takes on their website, it, it just creates a lot of cognitive overhead. We want to standardize all those things. So we've standardized every, different piece of information across all data sources, and we supply that through our infrastructure. But really, look, data quality issues happen, and so we have a data ops team that is backfilling information if there's an issue, right? They might be calling up the marine traffic and it's like, hey, we haven't really received an update around ETA, so let's add that to to our data platform on behalf of our customers. So we're kind of like, let us do the hard work around this data plumbing and janitorial work, and you do your operations and take actions. But where we're going with this is, look, you are making decisions on, let, as an ETA, as an example, you're taking forward-looking decisions. People tend to add like, okay, seven days after ETA, my customer will get it through the warehouse. Now all of those mental models are broken. So we are not only building our own predictive ETA, we have a predictive discharge product coming, predictive availability, and then finally, you'll be able to give us a container number and a zip code and we'll predict when your customer is going to get to because that is what your customer wants. And you know, our goal is to do that in a step-by-step -step way and enrich that data and give you predictive data so you can make decisions uh, more efficiently. Um, later this year, we are adding rail carrier data. So rail is, rail is hard. It's because, you know, you need to get into the rail terminal depot, uh, you know, BNSF's website to get the IT number, to give it to your trucker, pickup number. And our goal is let us aggregate, clean that up and provide it to you in a systematic way or a dashboard. Um, and getting data in and out of Terminal 49, we are flexible in how, how, uh, in how, on the tools that you're using. So it could be as simple as spreadsheets. You know, we're not even trying to get people out of spreadsheets. If you want to just automate your spreadsheet, that's something we can do. Uh, and we help a lot of our customers do that today. So that's kind of Terminal 49 at a high level, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. I have a very stupid question. So what is the difference between Project 44 and what you're doing? Um, there's, so P44, I think, you know, to, uh, ultimately, I don't really know under the hood, you know, what's happening. But I think, from my understanding, they are focused on. There are experts at over-the-road trucking visibility, um, and they are connected to all the ocean carriers as well, so the carrier-level data. But our differentiation is today is to get you inland visibility, specifically when the container discharges. You want to know what the set of holes are, set of fees it might have, what's the last free day. If you have a contracted last free day, we actually pull that dynamically from the, from the terminals. Uh, what's, if you have an accessorial needed for a refrigerator container, you won't be able to get that from P44. Today you might be able to get it later, but our focus is to go really deep into every single place that a container might be and put that together and build a pretty picture. So. Any other questions? I got one for you. So yesterday we heard that um, we don't need to put sensors on every container. Um, how do you, what's your stance on that? Um, I, I think, I think there, there are, you know, the, the, there's high risk commodities if you have food um, and you, or if you have uh, commodities or your products that, you know, you want to make sure if it gets moved around a lot, so I think the sensors have a lot of use cases that we, we might not be able to do just with this inflection point information. So it, this is a complementary to sensor data. Now, if you're trying to put sensor data 
for tracking. I think there's value in it in the sense that our blind spot today is when a container gets picked up from a trucker and goes to the warehouse, we don't really know what's happening. We are working on that later, but today are, we are more like milestone focused. Um, but I think there are so many use cases where sensors are very valuable. Okay, yeah. Thank you. So uh, you mentioned that you're launching a, a predictive analytics uh, feature. So which kind of, uh, of variables are you using as an input to predict the ETA? Yeah, so we have, uh, so if we just look at arrivals, um, vessel AIS data, vessel tracking, vessel, where is the vessel at any given point is pretty critical. We also have schedule data, so it's okay, okay, for a given vessel, where is it going, where is it coming from? Um, and we have a lot of historical data uh, for any given vessel and voyage, so we're using that as an input. So our initial product will just focus on those inputs to see if we can hit our KPIs of like 24 hours within arrival, but over time we'll look at weather um, as, as an input, uh, we might look at uh, you know, specific regions and like their legal, like LA has an issue right now. People think that the congestion is going away. It's actually just next to Mexico. It's, it's just moved back. So the congestion is just there. You don't see it near LA, but all the containers are sitting out here so they don't have to pay fees in that specific area. So um, there, you know, initially it's like, let's just do simple things and we can, if we can provide predictions, but over time we might take more and more inputs that make sense. So you, oh, another, another question. So your customers are also then using your service to kind of monitor for any like disruptions as well, would you say, or? Yeah, I mean, I, I think we're still pretty early in um, looking at, so to speak, black swan event disruptions. You know, let's say, uh, un the unfortunate situation that's happening, you know, I I around Ukraine and th those containers, ships that might be there, we don't really know what's going to happen with them, right? So even even the best vessel tracking and prediction ATI, like uh, it, predictive products can't really um, provide any answers over there. So I do think humans will be in the loop for these out of, out of bound events and, you know, that's where our data team comes in to annotate certain data um, to give you more awareness of like why something might be delayed or why something might not be arriving when you're expecting to arrive. All right, if there are no other further questions, um, you can see Akshay and his team of uh, Termo 49 at, at your stand. You're gonna be around today as well, right? Are One there, last yeah? thing I would like to say is we actually believe a lot in try before buy type of situation and you know, I, I think you can actually sign up, upload a spreadsheet, and try it with real containers without talking to any salespeople. Um, because ultimately, tools like this cause workflow changes in your organization, and it might not make sense, but you know, so it's like talking to salespeople doesn't make sense in the beginning, it's like give the tooling to your team, let them play with it, and so you know, feel free to sign up and, and try it out. Cool, thank you.